what's up everybody it's brand man sean and we have an exclusive clip from the rap fest podcast where russ b interviewed lil pump's producer go ahead and check this out you might have seen the other interview he did with drummer boy this is another dope one he's worked with so many people and he's really going to put y'all on how to really get into the game and rise quickly as a producer let's get into it oh man diego Ave, welcome to the rap fest podcast presented Sponsored by the Brand Man Sean Network. Pleasure to have you on, man. Yes, sir. Pleasure to be on. Cool, cool. So, yeah, man, tell us a little bit about, you know, what you got going on. I, I see that you have a little pump record with, with French and Quavo, you know, this post to do. So how did, how did that come along? You know, give us a little background on that record. So with that record, it's crazy because it, the whole thing happened within like five different sessions. So first, it was just Quavo's part, the hook. And it was, a, it was like an old record from like 2014 that my guy Molly Maul had. Wow. So he took that acapella of just that part, just the hook, okay. and he placed it on one of my beats, right? And then we, he ended up playing that same, um, just the hook with my beat to Smoke Perk. Mm. So Smoke Perk cut a verse, and he originally it was supposed to be for him, and then after Lil Pump cut it, he fell in love with it too. And then, you know, they figured out how to make it for his single because I guess Pump wanted to drop a single sooner. So we kind of just said, you know, whoever's dropping first, let's go with that. Right. And then, um, so they ended up throwing French on it. And then I guess something got mixed up uh, towards the business side of it. I don't know, but they didn't, they didn't end up keeping Perp on that record. So like a lot of people like heard that version and they were like, yo, where's, where's, uh, where's Smoke Perp at? But the song's still doing good, though. People are still messing with it. And, um, yeah, I'm excited about it. I actually originally did that beat with, with my bro, uh, Go Grizzly. He's a dope producer out of Atlanta. Okay. So he uh, co-produced that with me. And Mark kind of put the whole play together. Like, kind of orchestrated the whole, the whole record. Dope, dope, dope. So what's it like working with Lil Pump, man? You know, he has this presence on social media. And I know everybody has, you know, their perception of him. But what's it like really kind of working with, with him, man? and having that energy around? I mean, to be honest, all that social media stuff is social media, man. Like most of the people I work with are like real chill, calm human beings in the studio and they're kind of in a different, a different energy so they can create. So he's, you know, real chill guy, real nice, respectful. Most, most people I work with are like that too. Right, right. So I know you worked with like, you know, other artists like Rich the Kid, Kevin Gates, Flo Rider. What would you say? is like your most memorable collaboration as far as artists, you know, in the studio and, and really just making some, 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 something creative together. I would say for me, um, cause I went on a run for like, I would say like two years ago, I started working with Scott Storch, right? The, uh, he's a big producer. And we wow. kind of started working with so many different artists within like a span of three months. Like it was a crazy run. Every day was a new artist in the room. And just, you know, watching how he works and just watching all these different artists come in and just get into, you know, lace up all these beats for these people. It was like a, an amazing experience. And it's crazy because I had a similar experience as well when I first started with another producer, um, Rico Love, who kind of helped me put my first foot in the door okay. in the whole business of, you know, and everything. You know, shout out to him. And it was the same thing. Like we was in a camp and we just had different, everybody was just coming by, just checking out our records, checking out our demos and our songs. It was just so many different artists. And to be honest, it's hard to like recall one moment right. where I really fell in love with like, you know, one situation. It was just so much stuff over the past like 10, 12 years. Right, right, right. You know, it's all memorable for me. But I will say though, for me, one of the like dopest sessions I've been in, this was probably like when I was like 21, I think. I'm okay. 28 now was a Will Smith session. Wow, wow. Yeah, wow. like he, just because, you know, he didn't even end up recording nothing, just him coming by and trying to, you know, make some music with us. To me, yeah. that was like, that was just iconic, you know? That's insane, man. And then, and then like, as far as records, what would you say is, is your most proud record or, or even album that you were able to, you know, have your hands a part of? I really, I mean, I like a lot of stuff I do, but to me, I really love the record called Sorry with Rick Ross and Chris Brown. I could do that with Scott Storch. Um, the reason why I have like a, a special love for that record is because I was proud to be able to put a different kind of drum pattern 
on mm. on that type of beat and it, and it still go to the radio because mostly everything on radio is going to have trap drums it's really right. difficult to not do trap drums and to have a record work on radio you know what i'm saying like i mean sonically the drums so on that record i used boom bat drums it was like big kicks and big fat snares like in the 90s so to me that was like kind of dope for me you know me coming from that era right 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 so what would you say you know here at the rap fest we we like to you know give a lot of advice and um help you know the underground producers that are trying to you know get to the space where you're at so what what advice would you give them just as far as getting their foot in the door i say the most important thing to do would be to collab collabing is the biggest key to having a quick run in this business because you can put yourself in multiple places at the same time so right. if i work with this producer today then tomorrow i work with another producer they're going to go and play all those beats to all the artists that they can get to while i'm still doing the same thing so you're multiplying you know your product and you're you're expanding uh, the different people that can hear all your beats and you got higher percentages of getting placements and you're getting better and you're learning new stuff to me collabing is everything mm. Dope, dope. And make sure your business is good too on everything, you know. Just be a fun right. person to be around, and the more people want to be around you, the more they call you back for those sessions. Right, right. What do you What do you see that's next, like in the game? What do you see any trends, or do you see kind of the the culture shifting in any particular way? Yeah, like I'm loving how I'm starting to notice they're taking like they're they're doing hybrids right now where they're like bringing in certain genres of music like country and bringing it to trap and you know right. everything comes full circle and I'm just I'm right. loving watching the more musical side of of the of the music come alive into like the trap world. I think that's really dope and I noticed too they're also taking like those Mexican type of uh, chord progressions like those old mafia movies and putting trap drums on that's really what like Lil Baby and all these guys are loving mm -hmm. so I, yeah, I'm excited it. about that and I want to I want to keep pushing and keep it keep it musical you know like I love I can play keys so I love putting that kind of musicality behind the beats I make so I'm loving that dope man dope man yo man I appreciate you taking the time to come on man and um let everybody know how they could get in tune with you and, and stay in touch with you and your socials and everything. Yeah, so you can follow me on, on uh, Instagram. It's just Diego Ave, D-I-E-G-O-A-V-E. And I also have a online music course that we're doing for young up-and-coming producers so they can get the first step on how to get placements and how to get your beat to sound right so people can record to them. It's the producer mindset is the website. That's the company. So just go to musicproducermindset.com and get your course now. Okay. Dope, dope, dope. Well, Diego, man, it's been a pleasure, man. My brother, I appreciate you. Of course, man. Looking forward to seeing whatever comes next, man. It's, it's, it's a lot going on for you, so we're going to stay in oh, tune. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I want to I wanna throw out, too, that I got this... Uh, I got this single drop in um, next, I would say like in, within the next two weeks. Okay. Uh, produced for me, uh, D DJ Swish and FNZ is coming out. It's going to be Danile and g Easy. It should be a dope little buzz record for summer. Dope, dope, dope. All right, cool, man. We cool, want to definitely be